The Wooden Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. Now before we can add the tenons to the drawer sides, I have to peel off just a little bit of material here. Uh, you know, I try to be smart and get these bevels cut ahead of time. What I didn't account for was the fact that we have to take a little bit off of the top and bottom of our drawer front so that it floats in and out with a little bit of a gap. So when you put these guys next to each other, you'll see that those drawer sides are just a little bit tall, right? So we're just gonna peel off a little bit more until we're nice and flush. Now I've pretty much spent most of this afternoon trying to think about how I want to cut the tenons on the ends of our side pieces. Uh, two ways come to mind that are kind of obvious to me. One is at the table saw, you can have the pieces vertical and then have a miter gauge putting you at the proper angle and you can cut one side this way. The problem is even if I have stops set up for repeatability, I have to turn the miter gauge the other way to do the second side. Uh, which kind of screws up stop positions and just becomes a little bit hectic. Uh, so that is one idea. I'm not sure it's a great one though. Um, the other thing is just cut it by hand, right? This is actually simpler than cutting dovetails and dovetails aren't that difficult. So uh, we could just use a handsaw, sneak up on the fit until we get something that looks pretty good. So not 100% sure what I'm gonna do yet, but the one thing I know we absolutely need to do at this point is create that little shoulder on here. We gotta remove about an eighth of an inch on both sides to create that shoulder and maybe in the meantime, while I'm doing that, I'll come up with some brilliant idea for how I want to cut the tenons. So I've got a three quarter inch wide dado stack here, and I'm going to set the fence as my stop. The fence position is going to help determine how much of the tenon protrudes from the drawer front. So we know the drawer front is three quarters of an inch. So the distance between here and the fence is going to reflect how much it's going to protrude from the front surface. So if I only want it to protrude about an eighth of an inch, I should give myself about an eighth of an inch gap here between the blade and the fence. And the blade height, well, that needs to be about an eighth of an inch as well, uh, but we're gonna sneak up on that fit. Now you can test against your drawer front, you could test against the template, uh, but what we wanna make sure you do is test from the front face. Remember that front face is our golden reference there. So when I slide this piece in like this, you're not gonna get the full thing in, but you can see it's a little bit loose, a little bit of a gap there. So thankfully, this is just a test piece. I do recommend you make a test piece if you can. Um, so I'm just gonna retract the blade a little bit and leave a little more stock on there. All right, and this is what we're going for. Just barely wants to slip through there. Right, something like that. And remember, we can always remove stock later. You just don't want it to be loose right now. So we can cut these on both of our side drawer pieces. All right, so I've made a decision. I'm gonna cut the tenons by hand. This is one of the reasons why I promote the concept of hybrid woodworking so much that is using power tools and hand tools in unison uh, is because a lot of these skills are transferable. So if you know how to cut to a line and then chisel down to smooth things out, you can actually do something like this fairly easily, especially when the power tool side of things starts to get a little fuzzy and you seem like you're kind of just spinning your wheels just for the sake of using the power tools, right? So it's only a few joints, two sides to the drawer. We're gonna cut them with a good sharp saw and then clean things up with a chisel. So let me show you how it's done. So to lay out our lines, I'm actually gonna use the jig. Now the problem is this jig was made to go on our drawer front, so the spacing is based on that. If I use a 9 16 shim, just a shop cut little piece of scrap, push that here, that actually lines my lines up with the tenon itself, right? And then I just have to use my hands to find that center line an even overhang or just flush on both sides, whatever makes the most sense. And I'm gonna use a very sharp pencil, uh, half millimeter lead. Now when drawing your joinery with a pencil like this, it's really important to understand what that pencil line represents. In this case, I'm drawing inside the tenon area, so my pencil is actually in the keeper zone. So when I make my saw cuts, I wanna be outside that pencil line in the waist. Center is waist, outside is waist. Now I'm gonna use my thumb for support and I'm gonna put my blade just outside that pencil line. I still want the pencil line to be there when I'm done. At the end of the cut, you wanna be careful not to cut into your shoulder. 
right? So that's the first cut. Now on this side, the waist is in the middle, so I want my blade to the left of that pencil line. Once again, blade in the waist, and we're gonna leave that pencil line intact. Now I can use a fret saw to go in those kerf lines and get rid of the excess. Actually, we'll just do that in the middle. I'll show you the outsides in a second. Just outside the shoulder, we'll chisel it flush later. Now before I worry about cleaning up the shoulders, it's not that big of a deal, I'm gonna focus on each one of these cuts that I just made. I'm most concerned with the outside edge because again, that's what's gonna be seen. If the cuts slope in slightly from there, that's fine. Uh, if they flare out, then we're gonna get caught up as we try to go into the mortise. So first thing I'm gonna do is look along my pencil line. If I see a little bit of material there, I can actually remove that. Any pencil line material or any material outside of that pencil line is waste that shouldn't be there. And actually most of these look pretty darn close, but I think I could do a little bit of cleanup. Start with this one. And my saw cuts were pretty straight. So when I do like peel off some material, I'm looking for it to be even and peeling off an even amount of material as I go across the little tenon. Slowly work my way back to that pencil line. This is where it pays off to practice with your saw because if you can cut dead on a line, your joints fit right off of the saw with like minimal chiseling. Personally, I don't use my hand saws enough, so I always give myself just a little bit of room to spare. All right, so this is the back of my drawer. I'm gonna slowly drop this in place and you gotta be careful here because you don't wanna mangle the tenon and you don't wanna tear out the front of the drawer. We can't go all the way anyway, but I am gonna just give it a few taps just to see how it feels. See, and as we're doing this, we're also gonna crush some fibers on the tenon and we can actually see when we pull the tenon back out if we can remove some material where needed. And when I look inside here, everything's looking pretty snug. So I think we're in really good shape. I wanna back this out. We can clean up the rest of the shoulders and look for any worn spots on the face of the tenon, the cheek of the tenons, and see if there's any material we need to remove. Now fortunately, this stuff is easy to remove. You've got a reference surface here and a reference surface there. You just gotta move everything that's sitting above that surface. Check for square. All right now, let's see how we did. It's looking pretty good. I don't see any major gaps. Pretty confident in the way that looks. And I think we could proceed to the other one. Same exact process, so there's really no reason to show it to you twice. Yeah, baby. So now I'm gonna take the drawer dry assembled like this, put my slides in place, and make sure I've got some shims in here to give me that 16th space at the top, and I wanna drop the drawer in. Now, it should fit. You know, you shouldn't really have any major issues, but if there are issues, if it's a little bit too uh, tight here and you can't get the drawer in, you may wind up having to take a little bit of material off of the outside faces of your drawer sides. If it's too loose, well, that would kind of suck at this point because that means you, you don't have enough material there. Things that can be done include shimming. You might be able to put a small shim under the slide to essentially push it out a little bit more, uh, but that would not be an ideal scenario. Hopefully that won't happen. So next up, we need to think about 
the drawer back. So we're gonna have a back with two miter cuts on it. I'm gonna put a rabbit back here and probably just do a reinforced rabbet there. Uh, but these sides are cut a little bit long. If you remember, you could see it's, it's hitting in the back and we've got a lot of material uh, sticking out the front here. So what we need to do is measure. Now, let's take this away. I actually want my drawer to sit a little bit proud of this front apron. I think that would look cool. And I, I'm guessing probably about an eighth of an inch would look pretty good, right? So what I need to measure is how far back from this front edge. So we, let's say we have an eighth of an inch proud of the apron. Then we have another eighth of an inch for this guy. That's a quarter inch is where that front would end up. So all we need to do is measure from the back because I want the drawer to smack against the back apron, right? Measure out and then a quarter inch from this front edge. Doesn't matter what the plans say, you wanna actually measure that. Take that measurement and that is the total length of our sides. Now at the back of the drawer sides, we need to create that rabbit. It's gonna go about three eighths of an inch deep and then it'll be three quarters of an inch wide because the drawer back is three quarters of an inch thick. I've got my three quarter inch dado stack. It is just at the point where it's kind of just kissing the fence. I mean, it's, it's just barely touching it. Uh, you could put a sacrificial fence on here if you need to. So we'll just make this cut with the miter gauge. Next, we need to cut our back piece, which is already pre-cut. It's just not cut to length. We have to cut it to the proper length and put those miters on there at the same time. So what I did was use some of these aluminum squares to really lock the sides and the front into a nice square orientation. This allows me to simply cut it to fit. Uh, I don't know exactly what the measurements are. I do know what my angle is, right? It's the same angle we've been using this whole time and I can make these cuts at the miter saw and then when it fits, it fits. So I don't have to worry about taking a measurement. Next up, we need to cut a groove in our drawer sides for the drawer bottom. Now this is a little bit weird because our drawer sides sit on an angle. So we have to offset that angle to make sure that our drawer bottom goes into that slot just the way we want it. So I have a dado blade here, just the two outer blades. That'll give me a quarter inch wide or you know for a quarter inch thick bottom. And I essentially drew about a quarter inch up, struck a line, then another quarter inch struck a line. And then from this angle, you won't be able to see it, but from this angle, I eyeballed it just to make sure we have it where it needs to be. So I'll be able to run this piece like so. You can see the blade, by the way, is at an angle, right, to offset. And that's the same angle we've been using this whole time. And then I could run my other side like this. So let's see how it goes. Now, when you bring these pieces side by side like this, you should see they're mirror images of one another. And it goes about a quarter inch deep on the short side and the length on the long side is whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. Now, when we bring our drawer back here, because we're gonna need two different setups, one to cut the groove on the drawer back, one to cut it on the drawer front. If I bring the drawer back in place, I can actually just flush it up and then use the groove we just cut to mark the locations of the groove in the back piece. Now with the same quarter inch dado stack in here, I just moved the fence, I lowered the blade a little bit, and now we can cut the groove into the back piece. Now check out how nice these guys come together. The groove lines up perfectly. All right, so the cool thing was we were able to go all the way through on the back piece because this rabbit covers the end. You'll never see the groove. It won't poke out the back. Uh, we don't have that luxury in the front. So we need to try to make the same groove, but a stopped groove. You can see how if we cut a groove all the way through, it would poke out right here. It would be visible from the outside. So we need to stop it. And in order to know where that is, I'm just gonna use the groove in the side to just give me a rough mark. Now we already know the spacing here. It's a quarter inch up. It'll be a quarter inch wide. What I really need to know is this start and stop point. It'll be the same on both sides. So I can kind of take that info and extrapolate it to the other side. Uh, but the most important thing is I'm going to be running this on the router table when it's going to be a blind cut. I'm not going to be able to see it. So what I really need on this face is a line that tells me where to start and stop. So I'm just going to extend this line. At the router table, I have a quarter inch spiral bit. It's protruding a quarter inch up from the table surface and I need to position the fence. So the easiest thing to do is actually just to grab our drawer back that we've already cut. Make sure the wings of the cutter are front to back so it's at its widest point and then see where it slides right into the groove that we've already cut. 
and it's a pretty sensitive thing, right? So if it's not dead on, you will not get this easy sliding motion. Once you have that, you could lock your fence in. The other thing we need now are marks that tell us where to start and stop. So I'm gonna turn the bit the other way, just very carefully with my fingers. I want the widest part, with those little wings, going side to side. And then I'm just gonna take a big block of wood with one square corner, bring it till it hits the bit, put a pencil mark on the fence, do the same thing on the other side, just to the point that it hits the bit, pencil mark. And I do wanna make sure you understand how this is done. When you do a dropped cut like this, you really have to control the workpiece completely. So I will line up with my mark, I'll keep pressure on the workpiece into the fence, and what I'm trying to do is drop it down slowly and evenly. If I start to tilt or go a little bit wonky, that's when bad things happen. So I'm gonna get right to my pencil line, slowly drop down, take my time. Once I'm fully seated, then I begin moving forward. All right, so I'm gonna knock these guys together one more time. Now to measure for our bottom panel, it's not quite as easy as just kind of marking a quarter inch out to account for each groove and getting your total dimensions. Uh, on the, the front and the back, you can certainly do that. Just put a quarter inch line in from the back edge, that represents the depth, and you can go front to back. That's no problem. Side to side is a little bit trickier, and take a look. If we measure in a quarter inch from this top edge, it's gonna put us too far in. What we need is to know where the bottom of the groove is, which is straight up from there. So you can kind of roughly mark that line on both sides. And that should give us our width, but if you're using solid wood, you wanna make sure you leave yourself about a 16th of an inch for expansion. I'll resaw some white oak for the drawer bottom, milling down to about a quarter inch. This is just a simple quarter inch panel, so we'll join the glue edges and then glue it up. Now while that panel is drying, we can start to think about installing the slides. Uh, this is something we want to do while the drawer is apart like this. Once it's glued together, this becomes a lot harder. So here's the setup I'm going to employ here. I really like to reduce variables as much as possible. So the slide, a good place to install it is so that it's up against you know, our, our top here. It's going to touch the top and lean up against this compartment. Uh, so if we have it there, roughly, I'm going to take my two 16th inch shims and bring my drawer side over. Oops, that's the wrong face, this way. Right, so if the drawer side goes like this on that angle, sitting on top of the shims, that's gonna give us the appropriate gap. If I push it up against the slide while pushing down, that's about the, the location we're going to have that thing mounted. So what we need to do is transfer the location of the slide center point to the side of our drawer. If I know where that center point is, then I can actually take this piece off, this front, uh, whatever you would call this, <laughs> the little runner there, I would take that off, install that onto the drawer side, and the centers should all line up. So what I've done is, right here, uh, just used a Sharpie, measured in from both sides to get what would be a center line, so in between those two black lines is the center point. When I bring my drawer side over, I can get a pencil in there, it's a little bit tight, but I could transfer that center line to the drawer side. This is really difficult to do without getting my big melon in the way. Now I've also got the slide so that it's kind of flush with the shoulder. You really want it to be flush or slightly behind the shoulder. What you don't want is for the slide to be sitting proud of the shoulder. So as long as I have it flush or just behind, I could remove the side here and just put a light pencil line. I'll just use that later so that when I mount the larger part of the slide, I know how far up versus how far back it should go. You basically want the slide to be right behind the drawer front. So there's our mark right there on that shoulder. All we need to do is draw a line that's parallel to our top and bottom and go all the way back. That's a good reference line for the slide. Uh, we can actually use that measurement to mark the other side as well because they should be the same. So I'm gonna set an adjustable square to that mark. If I take that same setting, mark it on the far end, now I could take a straight edge and just connect those two points. Okay, same setting can be applied to the other side, right? They are mirror images of one another like this. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Now let's take one of our slides apart. This is the piece that gets mounted on the drawer and the rest of it gets mounted on the cabinet side or case side. So you just push on this little tab, 
pops right out. Okay, now this has to be flush with the front. Okay, not flush with the front here, but flush with the shoulder. And we want to line up the center line on these pre-drilled holes. It's actually just pretty easy to do by eye. And one thing that's great about mechanical slides like this is take a look at the selection of holes. You've got two slotted holes in both directions and then a couple of just regular holes. So we can use these to our advantage based on what we think we might need to change. So for instance, the way that this is going, I don't really think that the front to back is much of a concern for me. It's more the top to bottom. I wanna make sure that this drawer is sitting in that opening vertically and everything's where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna aim for the center when I drive my screw. I'm gonna use the vertical slotted hole and my screw can go in. And then if I have to make a slight adjustment later on, I can move it one way or possibly move it the other. And uh, it's easy to do without having to totally remove the screws. Once I know that the drawer is where I want it to be, then I can utilize some of these other holes to lock it down. So first things first, I want this guy to be flush with the shoulder. So I'll bring in a piece of scrap stock right up against that shoulder. And I'll just try to go in the middle of that slot with a self-centering drill bit. Now I'm just gonna snug it up so it's not too slippy, but not completely tightened yet. There we go. Yeah, that's good. All right, now we'll do the same thing at the back. And now what I'm really looking for is inside here, uh, I just wanna make sure using the circle hole that it is truly dead center. Do the same thing up here and then we can snug it down. Now back at the case, we have the other side of our slide, right? Which would go this way. Just make sure you get it, get it right. This one is gonna go back behind this line. And because we are resting up against the underside of the top, the vertical is not really an issue for us. This one, if we have any adjustments to make, it's gonna be front to back. Well, good news, look at the slide. The holes in this slide, the slotted holes are slotted front to back, right? So we're gonna have the option to adjust if we need to. So all I'm gonna do is go so that I'm touching the bottom and go right behind that pencil line and drill in two spots. Now it's hard to tell for sure what's gonna happen here because we don't have the whole drawer together. Things may change, but at least we have the hardware kind of where we need it to be. So I'm going to insert the side, almost as if this were the final drawer. There we go. Okay, the whole way as it travels, you can see that gap is maintained all the way through until we hit the point where it's at full extension. Right, that's as good as we can do for now. We need more information from the drawer itself, uh, but now we can do the other side. All right, hopefully this one will go on just as easily as the other one. Now, once we start finessing that drawer bottom and installing it, that kind of commits us, and I just want to make sure everything is perfect here. So I'm going to install the sides into the front. I'm not looking for perfection here. I just kind of want to prove a concept. In its home position like this, there shouldn't be a whole lot of movement there. So if I can fit this back piece in without any problems, then I think we could be pretty confident that we have what we need. Yeah, there we go. Cool, cool, cool. Now back to our bottom panel. We're just gonna sand it to clean it up, get it squared up and cut the size. Once the drawer bottom fits, we can prep for glue up. That includes sanding the bevels and giving those sharp edges a hand sanded round over. The tenons that poke through the drawer also get a little bit of a decorative treatment. Now, I'd really like to glue the entire drawer together at once, but I'm having a little bit of an issue I notice with my dry assemblies. When these guys are in place, they're not sitting totally square. So what I did when I was, uh, you know, kind of doing some measurements before using this aluminum square, I'm gonna use that again with glue in there to ensure that this drawer side is exactly square to the front. Just feels like a safer bet. Oh, and by the way, through tenons, gotta be careful how you glue these, right? Cause you really don't want much glue out here in front. So you could be strategic about it and only put glue on sort of the back half of the tenon and no glue in the mortise. In this way, it should put, put us where we need to be. And of course, if you wanna put it all the way in the mortise and you put like glue all over the tenons, that's fine. 
just have a little bit of extra cleanup. Not a huge deal. And you can see at the front there, no glue. Now if this closes up here and you don't see a gap, there's really no reason at this point to put further clamping pressure front to back. You could if you want to, but as long as the gap's closed, I don't really care. So now I'm gonna focus on making sure the sucker stays square. It's looking pretty good. We'll let that set up. Now the next step is to put the bottom, the drawer bottom in and then put the back in place. But I feel like I'm gonna need a little bit of help with these angles, getting the clamping pressure where I need it. So I think I'm going to glue or uh, temporarily glue some pieces on. With this angle that we have here, I wanna to try to glue across the joint perpendicular to the joint. So one of these little cutoff pieces that has our angle on it, if I can get that to stick to the bottom of the drawer, we should be able to actually just kind of clamp right across here. So let's do that. Some CA glue, this is just a gel CA glue. Well, fiddlesticks. And put some activator on this piece. You could still knock it off with the clamp, but we don't need a whole lot of clamping pressure. So let's repeat that on this side. Okay, so now I'm going to slide this panel in place I don't want to glue the panel in. The panel is made of solid wood. That means it expands and contracts, which is why we cut it a little bit short in width. But it is okay to immobilize it by putting a little bit of glue at the center point. So not much, just enough to discourage it from rattling and moving around. And I'll put some on the back piece too. Okay, here we go. That's what we're looking for. All right, the next day the glue is dry. We should just be able to pop these guys off pretty easily. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit too generous with the glue there, so gotta be careful not to damage the walnut. There we go. Now for the real test, Get these brackets back on here and see if this drawer still works. All right, now it's the moment of truth. Please work, please fit. By the way, if you've never installed mechanical drawer slides, the first time you push the drawer in, there's always a point where like parts have to slip past one another so you get resistance. That's, uh, that's not meaning something's broken. <laughs> it's just the way it works. Like right there, you hit resistance, you gotta push through that. And then from that point on, you get a smooth operating drawer. So now things are looking pretty good. I don't wanna drive those final screws into the slides just yet. I wanna have an opportunity to apply some finish. Once the finish is applied, we'll put the hardware back on and then once everything looks like it's good and I got this thing right side up, I'll make any last minute adjustments to the hardware and then drive those final screws. But for now, I need to get this thing right side up and start applying some finish. Actually, I may as well just apply some finish to the bottom while it's like this and then turn it right side up. Seems to be the smartest thing to do. Hard wax oils are very easy to apply. I've got a video specifically on applying Rubio Monaco that you might want to check out when you're done here. The finish is applied using a white Scotch-Brite pad. Once fully coated, about 10 to 15 minutes later, I use a clean rag to remove the excess finish. You really want to wipe all of it off. The wood only accepts so much finish, so anything that you leave on the surface will turn sticky and gross, and you won't be very happy. Oh, hi Nicole. For the top, it's a little easier to spread the finish using a plastic spreader. And just look at how that walnut comes to life. It's gorgeous.
So guess what I forgot to do? Remember I said I was going to pin these uh, back rabbits on the drawer? Totally forgot. So I'm gonna show you one of the reasons why I absolutely love these hard wax oil finishes. We're gonna be able to drill, install, clean them up, sand them, and then reapply finish just to this area and you know, the work's not gonna know the difference. Uh, that's one of the great things about these hard wax oils is they're very forgiving. Right, so I just have these evenly spaced. I'm going perpendicular to the surface. You might be, you know, you might want to go straight down, but that's gonna be really hard to drill that way. And uh, I don't really need a deep, deep dowel here to get the strength that I'm looking for. So this should work just fine. A Little bit of glue, quarter inch oak dowel. Now once the glue dries, use a flush trim saw. Now just get a little bit of finish off of my finishing pad here. Anything that I sanded gets a fresh coat. And check that out, perfectly blended in. There just aren't that many finishes that will allow you to do that. Now it's not gonna be the easiest thing to see, so use your imagination. Uh, but I'm going to reinstall the drawer slides under here. Now I actually have a square that I had set up previously for the setback, and I could use that just to make sure that it's sitting where it needs to sit. All right, so we'll do the same thing we did before. Push the drawer in, see how it's sitting, and then adjust as needed. Okay, so we're a little bit high on the left side, low on the right side. I think we will raise the right side a little bit. That's looking better. We got it. All right, so now I'm just going to add a couple of extra screws in the single circular holes to kind of lock this thing in place. Only thing left to do now is get this into the office and get Nicole's computer on there and let her mess it all up. And there it is. Now she's smiling because she's getting ready to dump a pile of sticky notes and video game knickknacks all over that thing. Overall, it was a fun project that occasionally tested my patience and skill. We took one angle and utilized it on nearly every part of this project. And it was fun getting outside of my comfort zone and trying something different. If you like these deep dive builds, then you're going to love what we do at the Wood Whisperer Guild. If paying for plans isn't your thing, don't worry, this isn't the last time we're going to push out a project in this format. Let me know if you dig this stuff in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. I hope you enjoyed going on this journey with me. Live long and prosper.